from Russell has gone for a corner. I tell you, if you bet on match corners in your accumulator, <laughs> you'd be, it could be quids in. I think that's about the seventh corner. approach now going right up against Lee Nichols making it very difficult for him to sort of move freely inside his own penalty area right into the middle Nichols has got a touch to it has got the free kick there as it looked like he did just get blocked off in trying to claim that ball in from Bakuna there referee Gavin Ward spotted it and he's given the free kick Huddersfield's way yeah, I mean, when you're bunching up like that, you, you, you're asking for the ref to just get involved and give a foul. They, they give it for anything nowadays, and they've done it there. Kuna into Hogan. Side. Flag is up. And he has given the free kick there. It is pulled back. John Russell is shown a yellow card, so that has come to Blues' rescue there. As you said, Rog, Hogan was offside there. Yeah, we we'll take that all day long. It was offside, Hogan again just went a little bit too early there, but take the free kick in a dangerous area now. Well, one thing that is very clear to see, I mean, you know, we saw in the opening sort of 15 minutes how Huddersfield, you know, were allowed to essentially bring out from the back. Blue's quite keen to do so, but not anymore, because in the midfield there, as soon as the ball was got, Blue swarmed around the Huddersfield players and made it difficult for them, didn't they? That's the thing, I think, I'm hoping that John, John Eustace has set that up. Let, let them play out. They do play out in stupid areas. For me, that there was crazy. They've just uh, conceded a corner, managed to get themselves out of it with a free kick and then spot the ball and play it to a man on the penalty spot. So, for me, that, that's crazy. And, uh, yeah, Birmingham set up in their shape there and waited for the for the moment to press and everyone was on the same page and pressed and if they score from this Huddersfield that'll be down to their own silly ways of playing out it's a free kick of real poise which Bakuna lays off for Poiheta to hit he's deflected behind and one that Nichols comes and gathers it was quite interesting to see what avenue they were going to go down it was the avenue of Bakuna laying it off to Poiheta but his shot was well charged down the ball is played forward. Thomas is on side, as he knows he's not. The flag is eventually raised. The Blues' defence was literally just expecting that flag to go up. The linesman on that far side waited for the right time and felt the need to get it up, and that's exactly what he did. Yeah, they're trying that a lot, that, that ball over the top, and they're not getting much joy from it. I just feel they've had a bit of joy out wide, getting the ball in into wide areas and, and trying to get crosses in. That straight ball... I don't think they're getting through Sanderson, Robertson, trusty with, with, with something like that tonight. But again, we, we've spoken about that word already in balance. I mean, you know, there was all three of that back line back dealing with that quick kick from Lee Nichols, which just goes to show, doesn't it, how alert and how much they've worked on this, you know, dealing with the ball in and out of possession when the opposition's in transition. Exactly that, and, and getting back into position, like I said earlier, when they haven't got the ball, they're, they're, they're back in a, in, a, in a five, which is brilliant to see but when they haven't got the ball what I do like rather than keeping one full back uh, one wing back along with you both full backs Collan and, and Poeta uh, they're both pressing high which is brilliant because you lock their, their their wing backs back then uh, rather than just sitting in and it's easy it's easy to mark so they're giving Huddersfield a lot to think about here there's Poeta now to Mark Roberts 35 minutes of absolute whiz by so far here at St Andrews and this Friday night, so now a bit of a chill in the air. Of course, as we know, the Commonwealth Games is on at the moment, and it's really put the city in a fantastic light. The team are certainly doing the Blues fans very proud on that front, as Bakuna looks to attack it. There's a lovely floated ball that looked like it was going to pick out Junio Bakuna, just could not get that telling contact towards Lee Nichols' goal. I'll tell you what, if he's meant that, that is a wonder ball. I think he has, you know, he spotted the run, he had his head up, just fractionally short there from Bakuna, but yeah, great ball in. There was a lot of whip on that from Jordan James, who's having a really good evening, isn't he, as the 18-year-old, and sort of echoing what Rog said earlier, does not look a out of place in this blue size does he as Dion Sanderson is trying to get it off Tino Andrew who's able to clear it away but Thomas can't get around trusty as that door is slammed shut by the American here's Poeta 
running through gets away from Hawk just forced out to the left but it's good work by Thomas to win it off him as now Huddersfield have got possession and have regained it I mean just going back to that ball from Jordan James I mean you know you're not sure if he meant it or whatnot but what a ball he put in it had so much whip on it and to curl it all the way round and nearly pick out your man in Bakuna I mean yeah I think he did in the end watching the replay he had his head up he, to be fair if he didn't mean it he's hit the right area so uh, good on both counts if, if he has meant that superb I think he did just watching the replay back because he looked up before he crossed it but he knows where where to put it if he didn't if he didn't mean it he's put it in an area where it's danger the keeper doesn't know whether to come uh, the defenders are thinking okay I hope my keeper helps me out and good run from Bakuna but just literally fractions too short and Jurin wins the throw in and this touch is taking a flick off a loose player well back for a second spell is Tino and Jurin he uh, had his sort of second half of last season where he was first on loan from Chelsea at Huddersfield sort of marred by injury it's an ankle problem that sort of limited his game time as he now plays it through to Danny Ward and that high line works wonders for Blues there as the Huddersfield lone strikers flagged offside just unlucky there it was good play it's probably their best build-up play yet um, I like I like him the eight uh, Tino Andrew in yeah, he's strong boy uh, just broke through the middle there and Ward just a bit too eager to get on the end of it yeah that offside trap really is working absolute wonders isn't it for the Blues back line so far as Danny Schofield's in conversation with Narcissus Pelac the assistant that he inherited from the previous regime and Carlos Corberan as Dini is back up on his feet the captain and gets a free kick for his side because he'll be in a red card tonight for Huddersfield it's that man there Russell who was booked for that foul on Bakuna just what a couple of minutes ago has then gone in on Dini again so he's in danger of getting a second yellow card and Thomas my money's on losing discipline how much you want to put it on then well you want a little bet with me <laughs> I'll have a little bet with you we'll have a fiver on it we shall see how that plays out we shall see how this free kick plays out as Boheta and Bakuna are standing over this. It'll be Boheta who puts it into the back post. Sanderson trying to attack it. Getting mm. there was Ollie Turton, who's headed it behind for a corner kick. It did maybe look like he took a bit of a blow to the head or his yeah, face yeah. of some sort, but he is back up to his feet, uh, glad to say. Yeah, I did think the referee was going to give a foul there. It looked like it was going to, but no, fair play. I don't think it, it was a foul and uh, good defending, to be honest. Yeah, it was. It was a real height disadvantage for Huddersfield's right back. Dion Sanderson, considerably taller than Ollie Turton, but he did well to get the header behind that for a corner kick, which was the best thing he could have hoped for. Goes in again, right to the back post. Trusty is the player trying to get on the end of it, does so, but it has gone out for a goal kick. It's probably their sixth corner now where they've tried that sort of stabbing punch ball. I'd, I'd love to see one just outswung, whipped, or in swing, whipped. Got some big bodies in there, some big good headers of the ball in Roberts, Trusty, and Sanderson. You've got Troy in there, Bakuna floating about. I, I'd like to see one whipped now. That's, that's probably six corners on the, on the spin now where they've just tried that, that driving one. It's too floaty. You can't, you're looking for seconds really. You're looking for the man at the back to, to head it back across and work off spit, work off the bits. Go back to the good old days, whipping it in and just meeting it with power and just get the ball in the back of the net. Well, Huddersfield, when they last came here, did win by two goals to nil, did score both the goals in the first half and the two goal scorers that day in Levi Colwell and Lewis O'Brien, not at the club anymore, of course. Levi Colwell's just signed on loan for the season with Brighton of the Premier League furthering his career as is Lewis O'Brien who of course as we said earlier joint Nottingham Forest after excelling in the championship last season is Radoni looking to get forward plays it now to Sorba Thomas who can't get on the end of the ball because it was played pretty much straight to Austin Trust who plays it first time out of his own defensive half is Jordan James checks back now finds 
Dini. He's got to talk to him there, uh, Bakuna. Just tell him to let it go. I actually think that pass was meant for him from JJ there. It was a decent whip on the ball. Just Bakuna again. Just got to open your mouth. So it will be a Huddersfield throw. Maybe Josh Ruffles, who's going to take this, had to play second fiddle last year due to the good form of Harry Toffolo. Of course, with him going, now means he's got the left back berth. And he's sort of in a league of his own in that respect. Lees gives it to Hogan as he challenges a very good one by Hogg, but Dean is there to win it cleanly. Gives it now to Jordan James, who's coming through the middle. Here's now Poheta. Cross goes in looking for Hogan. Touched. Out for a throw in by Romani Edmonds Green, but he's causing some issues for the Huntsville defences. Jemishwaf Poheta. He is indeed, and it, it, first sort of 20 minutes, 25 minutes, it was Bakuna and and uh, Colan, but JJ and Poheta are, are getting a relationship over that far side now, and he's he's getting in some good areas, Poheta. You know, for the first time tonight, get to see the long throw of Mark Roberts. Not too many times last year it really worked he's gone short to Poheta here Roberts will get it back tries to go short to Woods went to Gates putting the ball into the box he's now Andrew and is intercepted it read exactly what was going on but he's given it straight to Bakuna who's back to knock it back to John Ruddy really good anticipation from Janinia Bakuna and sort of part two brilliant for him to get back there and to just knock it back to John Ruddy brilliant work fair play he's one of them players where you're not sure if he is going to do it or he's not going to do it uh, but no, obviously John Eustace has got into him. The defensive side is massive. Um, and he spotted the danger, like you said there. And he's got, got himself back into an area where he's just... He smelt the danger and, and intercepted it. Roberts gets it away to Poheta. Beaten in the air by Ollie Turton. Well, two minutes to go until we know what the stoppage time will be. I thought it would be more than 60 seconds plus to add on the end of the first half where... It is Blues in the lead, as you can see. Scott Hogan's first goal of the season and the first one of the John Eustace reign has put Blues in the driving seat. As life at St Andrews for this current campaign has started tonight, remember. So they sort of managed to win a free kick, but I guess the one thing, you know, throughout this entire game, when they went in front early, Roger, you know, they've not sort of just drop back they just stayed firm haven't they and they've been resolute so far and you know you've got to say from that perspective that's been brilliant yeah definitely they've not changed from what from the first minute to the what we on the 43rd they've done exactly the same thing they've, they've stayed solid out of possession and in possession they've got men forward they both both wing backs are getting high and wide they're getting balls into the box Bakuna and Poheta are both involved they're both getting crosses in and it's, and it's a threat there's now Colan. A lot of room ahead of him to run into. Now to Sanderson. Maybe we're just going to see Blues just sort of run the clock down and just maybe hold on to what they've got. We shall see. Very open and keen to the idea of just trying to play keep ball in the final sort of minutes of this first half that remain. Colan to Hogan. That's a beautiful run in behind of Lees. Here's a chance for the second. He's laid now off to Jordan James. It missed Dini. James hits it. It's a good ball. Poheta hits it. Oh. And he put it to the net. And Blues have got a second. His first competitive game at St Andrews. And Jemiswap Poheta is a Blues goal scorer. They scored early in the first half to take the lead. Now they've scored very late on in the first half to go 2 0 up. Blues double their lead. And what a Friday night this is for the first time this season at St Andrews. Remember, Blues two to the good against last season's playoff finalists. Oh, great ball from Colang. He's had a few Hogan where he's gone to run in behind, timed it perfectly. And to be fair, I'm not sure if he's trying to pick out Troy there, but just a bit too much on it. But look, you've got JJ in the box, you've got your opposite wing back in the box in Pojeta, and he's picked him out. I'm not sure if he meant to. JJ's had a shot blocked and it's fell kindly for Beheta there and he's just sort of got it under his feet and stabbed it with a good bit of power on it and the keeper just couldn't keep it out there. Nicholas, I'm sure I think he'll be disappointed. Uh, Nichols 
just sort of pushed it into the side netting. Uh, but look, 2-0, what a time to score. Huge time indeed. He scored in that last pre-season friendly against Rio Vallecano. That doesn't mean anything if you can score on your first competitive appearance. And that is exactly what the Norwich Loney has done. He showed brilliant composure to take it under control, then hit it. Maybe Lee Nichols, in his own eyes, will feel he should have done a lot better with it. But Blues won't care, nor will the Blues faithful, because they are 2-0 up. Here's Thomas looking for Ward. Once again, the Blues defence stands their ground and is able to clear it away. But it now just changes the dynamic massively, doesn't it? Going 1-0 down, you know, there's a little bit of positivity. 2-0 down when you concede right towards the end of the first half. Completely just drains the mood even more, doesn't it? Exactly. They're going to have to come out. You'll see a totally different dynamic in the game now. They're going to have to come forward in the, in the second half, Huddersfield. For me, I think, although Birmingham have played really well, I've been disappointed with them in the, in the attacking third. They've not been great, Huddersfield. And the more that they come out second half, Birmingham play, play to their shape, they're going to pick them off. In my eyes, it's, it's, it, this is a win all, all day long. If they do it right, Birmingham, this is three points. Well, it's a similar story in terms of their first half performance of the one last Friday. But for Blues, it's been a first half to remember in what is the first home game of the season. You couldn't have wished for a better first 45 minutes to it. Scott Hogan, as he goes off the pitch with Troy Dini, got the first goal of the game after a wonderful ball in from Giannino Bakuna, which is finished off by Scott Hogan as he headed in his first goal of the season and Blues is incidentally. And that man there, Jemishwab Pueheta, got the second in the closing stages of the first half after Scott Hogan took provider, put it into Pueheta, who was there able to get it past Lee Nichols, who could not keep it out. As the first 45 minutes go of the home campaign, it has been a fantastic one from a Blues point of view. Half time. Blues 2, Huddersfield 0. First half reaction to come with Liam Daish and Hayden Atkins. They're just trying to Yeah, thanks to Matt Oz and Roger Johnson for their commentary of that first half. A really good first 45 here at St Andrews as Blues lead Huddersfield Town by two goals to nil. Uh, Liam Daish has been watching this one with us in the studio. Uh, Liam, a really good first half performance from Blues. They've taken their opportunities, they've pressed well and forget. This was a Huddersfield Town side that at the end of last season, right in the playoffs, and, and Blues have looked really good, haven't they? Yeah, I've been really impressed. Um... The system, they played the system really well. They're playing to the strengths of the system. Um, they look organised. Um, they look fit. Um, the lads, uh, you know, look well drilled. They're playing a system of 3-5-2, and they're playing to the strengths of that, and that's your wing-backs. Uh, it's pretty clear that when they do get it wide and they're moving the ball really quick and trying to switch play really quick, but when they do get it wide, they're looking for them early crosses, and... Um, with, again, with the strength of the system, with your two up front um, in Hogan and Troy, you know, that's what they'll thrive on. Yeah, make no mistake, Blues aren't really reinventing the wheel, so to speak, are they? They're doing the basics right, and at this level, when the teams are so evenly matched, how important is it that they do that? Yeah, and sticking to the process is massive. You know, don't just after five minutes decide you're going to do something totally different that you've worked on and you're... On your, in, in, all week in your preparation but what I do like uh, what I've seen is you know they've tried to move the ball really quickly and move it from right to left and left to right got two lads up front that are going to be a handful but with all respect they're not going to be the ones that are going to run in behind too much yeah. from deep so the strength is really to get it wide and you can see that John's put it um, you know I, I, I think that John's got that instruction across really well where we get it wide, you get it in good areas, now put that ball in the box as quick as you can because that's what 
um, unsettles, unnerves defenders. And, you know, I, I, I'm, as an ex-defender myself, the game in front of me, uh, you know, I'll be fine. But them early crosses would be always the one that catches you out. Mm. Yeah, you said during the game that you felt that the spine of Blues' team looked good. The, the centre-halves, the wing-backs in midfield, you've got your holder. Bakuna gives you a bit of flair. JJ's everywhere and then your two strikers. That spine being strong, like it was in that blue side when you...